doing today is we're going to continue working with radical equations. You'll notice I've already started the equation. I'm adding 3 radical x plus 12 to both sides because you need to get the radicals on opposite sides of the equal sign. So here's what we have. We have the square root of x minus 3 equals 3 times radical x plus 12 minus 11. Now, in the previous class, we actually solved it with the minus 11 on this side. To make it a little bit easier, what I'd like us to do, and just trust me, this will make the problem slightly easier. You probably won't feel that way after we get done with it, but it really will be, all right? We're going to add 11 to both sides so we don't have to worry about that particular one. So here's what we have. We have the square root of x minus 3. Make sure that when you're writing this, you put the 11 on the outside of the radical, not on the inside. And my board's not participating right here. Nope, still not working. Let's try it. Third time's charge. All right, there we go. This is what I want you guys to have right now on your graph paper. Basically, I haven't solved anything yet. I've just moved things on other on the opposite side of the equal sign to get one radical equal to a another radical. Now, from yesterday, what do you guys remember that we're going to have to do to both sides? We have to square it. So I want you guys to understand. We have to take this side right here, and we have to square this, and we have to take this side right here and square that side. We have to square both sides. Okay? One side is easier to square than the other. Alright? The right side is actually the easiest to square. So we just do three times three plus twelve. Three times three is nine. But this is where students mess up. They will put 9x plus 12, but they will forget to, that the x plus 12 actually should be put in parentheses. Okay? So it's 9 times x plus 12. So go ahead and put that on your papers. All right? Now this one is a little bit trickier. So let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to put open parentheses, open parentheses. I'm going to put the square root of x minus 3 plus 11. The square root of x minus 3 plus 11. And we're going to actually use the FOIL method okay, to solve this. So we're going to take this square root and multiply it to the first term. And we're going to multiply it to the second term. Okay. The first term is very easy. The square root of x minus 3 times the square root of x minus 3 is just x minus 3. There we go. Right there. That's how you get rid of a radical. So you have this multiply the radical times itself. So now this one, we have 11 times the square root of x minus 3. So it's going to be plus 11 times the square root of x minus 3. And we're done with the blue radical right there. Now I'm going to change colors here. We have to multiply this to both terms. So 11 times this radical is going to be 11 times the exact same radical. And 11 times 11 is going to be 121. Let's see what, let's see what we have here. Right now, if I add all the like terms together, I have an x, I have a minus 3. How many of these do I have? One and two, and I have four, five, six. That's right, I have 22 of them. And then I have a plus 121 equals, now, this 9 we have to distribute to both terms, so we're going to have 9x. One oh eight. That's right, 108. Good job. Good job. We'll find that here next week. Alright, now, on your graph paper, 
This is the most important step after you've done that. I want you guys to understand what we will start here, and I want you guys to write on your paper. This is where you need to isolate. Isolate the radical. And I'm going to highlight the radical float. When I say isolate the radical, and I highlight it to the because the variable is inside the radical, okay? I mean, I know there's more than one. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. All right, but we're going to isolate this guy right here, all right? So if you guys, if you guys want to put a box around it, or if you have a twistable or a highlighter, whatever you're using to recognize that this is what I need to get by itself, that's what I want you to write down. I'm sure my board will continue to work against me, but we're going to fight through. That's just the kind of that we are. We don't quit. All right. Now, over here, we have an X. So what I'd like you to do is we're going to take away. And that's right here. And we're going to take away. I'm going to add a tree. I'm going to add a tree. I'm going to take away 121. I'm going to take away 121. Now, that's not the only way you can do it. I'm showing you we're moving everything over, over here to the right. Okay? So these right here, these are all additive inverses of each other. And all I want left on the left hand side of the equal sign is a 22, 22 times an x square root of x minus 3. 9x minus x is going to give me an 8x. Okay? Yep. Very good. And this right here just becomes a minus 10. Alright, now I just Obviously, you could have combined those two and then moved it over. I was just trying to get it done at once. All right? Okay. I'm going to put it right here. The next thing that we need to do once you get to this stage is once again, you need to square both sides. So you need to square both sides. I'm going to take this side right here, and I'm going to square it. I'm going to take this side right here. And I'm going to square it. The reason we're squaring it is so that once again we can get rid of this pesky radical. All right. So in the calculator, be 22 times 22. You're going to need that. 484. Now, don't forget. Whenever you square this, you have to put it in parentheses. Make sure you put that in parentheses. Okay. Remember, this is 8x minus 10 times 8x minus 10. I'm not going to do the FOIL method on this one. Okay? I want to use some logic here. We know we're going to have an 8x times an 8x, which is a 64x squared. I'm going to have to multiply 8x times a negative 10, but I'm going to have to also do that not just one time. I'm going to, I'm going to have to do it twice. So it's basically, what's 2 times 8? times 10. Yeah, so that's going to be minus 160x. And then we have a negative 10 times a negative 10. So that gives us a positive 100. So that's what you have so far. I realize these are really, really, really big numbers. But trust me, they're not as big as what we did last year. We did something where they were, we got the same answer, but they were a lot bigger than what we were doing. Now, we're going to distribute. So 484, both numbers, you're going to get 484x minus, what is 484 times a negative 3? Negative 1457. Uh, is that correct, everybody? Yeah, I see a lot of nodding. People are agreeing with that. Now, Tori, do you see this squared? What does that recognize? What does that tell us about what type of equation we have here? That's right, it's a quadratic. So whenever you have quadratics, what do you have to set the equation to? Zero. Very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away a 484x from both sides. All right? I realize it's an ugly.
we look at X? I'll make it better. <laughs> and then we're going to do what? We're going to add 1452 to both sides. So now we have zero. That zero's out. That zero's out. We've got a whole lot of nothing. Equals 64 x squared minus what do we what do we get when we combine those? <laughs> All right. And here we just simply have one thousand five hundred and fifty-two. Since we have some big numbers. All right, the numbers that can go into 64 are 4 and 16 and 8, okay? So what I'm going to do right now, we're going to divide every single number by a 4. Just to make things a little bit easier. You have to work with big numbers. There we go. We have 0 equals 16x squared minus 644 divided by 3. I would agree 161 is good. <laughs> Alright? How about this? Myra, what's 1,552 divided by 4? There we go. There we go. You had the right answer just to the wrong question. Alright? Make sure you guys have that on your paper. Okay? By the way, my suggestion when you get to this, use a wonderful formula. Called quadratic formula. Because <laughs> the quadratic formula has one purpose and one purpose only. It finds roots. Your A value is 16. Your B value is negative 161. And your C value is 388. My suggestion is that you find your discriminant first. Find that sucker first. Okay? So we're going to take negative 161 squared minus 4 times my A value, which is 16, times my C value, which is 388. You can put that in the calculator all at once. It's very easy. 1089. Now that number, just so you know, makes me very excited. It is a perfect square. So right here, if I put a positive, negative B, so if I B is negative, it's going to make it a positive 161 plus or minus the square root of 1089 all over 2 times my A value, which is a 32. Did you find the square root of 1089? 33. It's 33. That's why I was really excited because I knew that 1089 was a perfect square. So we're going to write 161 plus 33 over 32. <laughs> Make sure you do the numerator first before you divide it by 32. That's one of our answers. And the other one is going to be 161 minus 33 all divided by 32. Make sure you do the numerator first before you divide by 32, and you're going to get two answers. Okay? One answer will be 97 <laughs> over 16 if you reduce the fraction, and one answer will simply become. You put it in the middle. Yeah, here I'll do it right here. Ready? It go um, alpha y equals enter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those squeeze. Yes. I apologize. Do that. So you're gonna put one of your answers is a four. The other answer is 97 over the solution set brackets, also known as the cool little squeaky things. All right. By the way, both of these answers work. Let me go back to the calculator. You guys see this calculator right here that I have? You see this problem? What did I type in? I typed in one of the solutions. 
So I plugged in at 97 over 16.